y'all, welcome back to the shop. Today's video is going to be on batch work, how I do it, and then some tips and tricks on how to make the batch work process potentially easier for you to do. I'll also give you some timestamps on how long it takes me to do each process uh, when I'm working on a batch. So you can see me here, I'm starting off with a piece of 1075 uh, from New Jersey Steel Baron, and I'm going to be making four of these knives. These are Skinner's, they're very popular in my area and a lot of guys at work ask for these. So I'll be making four skinners. Uh, you know, throughout the process, it ends up being three skinners. Uh, I made a mistake on one of them uh, during the grinding, so you'll see me skinny down the one. But this first process, drawing out and cutting the profiles of these knives, took me around 33 minutes to get all four cut out. So that's like eight and a half minutes per knife, more or less. So I get them all drawn out here with that spray-on dicum uh, blue layout fluid is great uh, and I just scribe them out and cut them out on the bandsaw this Bauer Bauer bandsaw from Harbor Freight and the uh, swag table here after I get them rough cut out on this deal I'll move on to the belt sander the bandsaw has a gap there in the in the swag table and I found that if you try to get too fine of cuts you can have pieces fall into that gap and hang up your blade and sometimes bust the blade so I, I don't go as fine as I used to on the bandsaw. I still leave a little meat there, and I just hit it with a, uh, a worn uh, ceramic belt in this case, just to get the profile ground out. So this belt is a uh, VSM 80 grit worn ceramic belt. Uh, you can get pretty close in the radiuses there, and uh, you can get a pretty nice profile. I'll later take it to, I think, 120 grit uh, on, the, on the profile there, just to have a nice uh, small grit line uh, profile. And then take a magnet and make sure that these blanks are flat or at least pretty darn close to flat uh, before moving on to the next step. So the profiling on the grinder took me about 29 minutes there. The next step is to lay out the holes and then drill the holes in the tang. So once again I'm using this spray-on layout fluid. I get all the blades uh, sprayed on one side. I actually go back and spray the other side as well. Then I took a scribe and tried to line up where my holes were going to go, use the caliper to pick the center of the tang, and then use some punches to go ahead and center punch where I'll be drilling my holes. So it took me about 40 minutes to lay out the holes and drill the holes in these tangs and these four knives. And that's with me uh, drilling a uh, 13, number 13 hole for the Corby fasteners in two spots. I'm drilling an eighth of an inch hole in the center. And then I'm drilling some lightning holes, or I guess some epoxy holes, uh, all around with some old bits. I think I have an old number 12 bit that I'm using to put the lightning holes in the tang. So this is a setup that I use on my mini mill. Uh, I have one side that kind of has a stop there. Uh, on that 321 block, so if the mini mill ever grabbed that blade, it would be stopped uh, mechanically and not, you know, helicopter into me. So here we go, I'm, I'm laying out those bevel lines that I'll be grinding to, and then using the center line scribe, I lay out the center lines that I'll be grinding to uh, for the edge. You can see there I also put some marks on how far I want my plunges to come up. I normally target that first line and then I end up moving them to that back line. So this is kind of new for me. I start off mostly uh, using jigs in the last, I don't know, uh, year or so. And I've been moving into doing freehand grinding. And I actually attribute the jig to helping me do that. So I, I'll start off, uh, I used to start off grinding on the jig to get me to about you know 80% of the material taken away. And then I would move on to a J-Flex belt and finish out my plunges by hand because I found I had more control. And now uh, I've you know, been able to advance to doing the whole thing freehand. So if you're using a jig right now, uh, don't despair. You will eventually be able to freehand if you keep practicing at it. It just takes time. It's definitely not, definitely not an easy thing to learn uh, right off the, the bat. So practice uh, makes perfect in this case, or at least practice makes better. I think I'm eventually going to do a video specifically on grinding and what I've been able to learn uh, just messing around in my shop. But I take all these up to an 80 grit ceramic belt uh, 
I actually didn't have anything of a lower grit, so we started with the 80 grit as well. Uh, it's a blessing and a curse. It takes a little longer, but it's uh, you don't have those big grind lines to get rid of. So I took this up to an 80 grit finish, and then eventually a 120 grit. You can see there, uh, I got it uh, close to 90% done of a 40 heat treat. Uh, so this is a uh, J Flex belt right there, uh, 100 grit. So I'm just trying to knock down some of those uh, big, uh, some of those big grind lines. So there's still some meat here. Uh, it looks more finished than it is. Uh, there's still some meat on that blade to take down uh, that full flat grind. I like leaving a meat on the blade uh, so that you can grind away any decarburization of the surface after a heat treat and it just uh, gives you some room. It gives you a little more thickness too so the blade doesn't pick up any warps during the quench. So before the heat treat uh, you got to make sure all your holes are drilled, your bevels are ground, and also don't forget to put in your sharpening notch if you want to. Uh, you won't be able to do this post heat treat. So I'm using a 5 30 seconds chainsaw file here to get that in. So back to the times a little bit, uh, laying out and grinding uh, to 120 grit and notching out the sharpening uh, notch took me about 141 minutes, so almost two and a half hours. So, so far, uh, so far we're in this for about four hours for, uh, for up to this step pre-heat treat on, the, on these knives. So this is four knives from cutting out to pre-heat treat about four hours. So I'm getting the forge out here. Uh, I tried blowing out the shop a little bit. I do that periodically because you know I'm working in a garage here and all I have for dust uh, fighting capacity is throwing some fans up trying to push that dust out. So I, I blow the shop out uh, pretty frequently. If you're curious on how to heat treat uh, 1084 or in this case uh, you know 1075 is pretty close. I have a video up in the cards you can watch on how to heat treat. Uh, general basic heat treating uh, knowledge here. Um, I'll be normalizing these blades twice and then in this case I'll be quenching in vegetable oil uh, that is preheated to 120, 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I'll be tempering them for two tempering cycles at 410 degrees Fahrenheit. So I got these blades quenched. You can see they, they file tested easily and then they're going into the temper for two two hour cycles. So one thing to note here, uh, you'll see in my future videos, I, I've graduated to Parks 50 quench oil over the uh, vegetable oil. The vegetable oil requires a preheat. It seems like the Parks, uh, at least their data sheet says, uh, that you can quench in Parks from, I think, uh, somewhere around 45 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and get uh, very consistent results. So that's going to be a nice, a nice feature of the Parks 50. I'm also going to be using five gallons instead of one. Uh, so doing multiple blades at once in a batch scenario should be easier because if you quench uh, in one gallon of vegetable oil it will raise that temperature substantially and you'll have to spend some time cooling that oil uh, before you can quench again. To cool the oil I normally just use like a cold piece of steel and twirl it around in there until the temperature comes down and I can quench the next blade. So here you go I have uh, four, four blades there and then you saw like a test blade that I was working on uh, you know, it's going to be kind of a fun fact that one of these ends up being a test blade itself. But to heat treat the blades, that's um, not including the tempering process, it took me about an hour and a half, about 81 minutes. And uh, the tempering process obviously took around, you know, four or five hours, so I didn't count that in the time for making these knives. So I had one that had a little warp in it, uh, so I took a little time to get that warp out in my knife torture vice device here. I'm using a granite a sink cut out as my flat surface to, to make sure this is flat. And then the post heat treat grinding, I start with a 120 grit belt and I take my edge down to the thickness that I was shooting for which is somewhere between five and ten thousandths and I also take off a significant amount of steel from the flats to make sure that I've ground through any decarburization layer from the heat treat. So once I get them up to around a 220 grit finish I'll move on to either a scotch bright belt or a cork belt to kind of smooth out some of those scratches. I'm not 100% sure um, which one of those I like more. I really like the scotch bright though, but the corks I'm still playing with. After I get the post heat treat grinding done, that took me around 3.6 hours, about 215 minutes. Uh, 
After I get that done, I'll move on to etching my mark and then stone washing the blades. So I'm using my DIY uh, etching machine here. Uh, I, I want to put a ton of cards in this video because it, it it's flexing some of the uh, the videos that I've already made for sure on how to make some of this equipment. But I go ahead and I put my, my etch in here. I get my stencils from TUS Industries. Uh, they, they do a, a great job with the stencils. They last a long time. And then I etch these blades in acid for about 10 minutes, uh, scrub them down a little bit with some baking soda, and then put them into this tumbling device uh, so I can tumble these blades and get that stone wash finish. I normally do this for around 10 to 15 minutes per knife. And the cool thing is while I'm tumbling it, I can also be etching the next blade. So this process is pretty, uh, pretty smooth. It takes me about 80 minutes or 1.3 hours to do uh, all three of these knives. If you notice, I've moved down the three knives. So that's around 30 minutes a knife, somewhere in that range. So this is kind of where we're at here. We have them all stone washed. Uh, we're going to be working on the handles next. So the next step is to kind of lay out our handles, profile the handles, and drill the handles. So I'm going to be using uh, two. Two of the handles are going to be G10, uh, the orange and the green, and then I have some uh, desert ironwood here. All of these handle scales uh, came from Pops Knife Supply, uh, so and, and they were great. Uh, nice and flat already. Barely took me any time to make sure they were flat. I go ahead, I clamp them both together so I can use the knife tang as a drill guide and get my number 13 holes drilled to accept my Corby fasteners. After having these Corby fasteners holes drilled and then my eighth of an inch center pin hole, which I'm actually going to be using a mosaic uh, center pin for a little bit of flare here, also from Pops Knife Supply. Uh, after I have all these holes drilled, I'll draw the profile of the blade, I'm sorry, of the tang onto uh, the handle material and then cut that handle material out roughly on the bandsaw. It is, when you're doing batches, it's very important at this step that you mark what blade goes to what handle material and not get them mixed up because they are now matched sets. So I get it rough cut out and then rough ground on the belt sander uh, to get all the the uh, the layout of the handles, the profiling done, and the drilling of the handles. It takes around 158 minutes for three blades. Uh, that comes out to about 52 minutes of blade there, and that includes uh, you know this 45 degreeing of the front of the handles and getting that finish up to your uh, desired finishing uh, for the whole handle. So I took the fronts up to around the thousand grit here, uh, actually up to a thousand grit here uh, on the front of the handles. After I, I get the front of the handles done, I'll go ahead and uh, hit those holes with the countersink bit to accept my uh, quarter inch Corby fasteners. I also got this bit uh, from Pops Knife Supply and it's been a game changer. I had a DIY bit and it, its performance was not nearly as good as this one that's actually made to do this job. So I get all these countersunk holes uh, drilled into the handle material here, and then we're going to be off to the glue up. So the glue up can be kind of boring to watch on screen, so I, I cut around here a lot. But long story short is I use G-Flex epoxy uh, to glue up these handles, and then I utilize Corby fasteners uh, to snugly tighten the handles down. And then you can see me hammering there. I'm, I'm tapping in an eighth of an inch mosaic pin. So gluing up the handles took about 52 minutes for three handles. So that's about 17 minutes a handle there. And then we let these sit overnight. So I'm not including that time in, in, this, in the final numbers you'll see later. But then we let them sit overnight for uh, about 24 hours at least. Um, it actually was like two days before I got back to these. But uh, that G-Flex epoxy says to cure in uh, about 24 hours. And I guess it slightly depends on the temperature of your shop, if it's hot or if it's cold. So. If it's hot, it'll cure a little faster. So next thing I'm doing is I'm kind of spraying the blades down with a little bit of WD-40, and then I'm wrapping them uh, with some tape so as not to damage the blades while I'm doing my handle sanding. But I'll, I'll first profile the handle to the tang, and then I will utilize these one-inch scallop belts to do a lot of my handle shaping and rounding here. So the rough grind these three handles, it took me 77 minutes, uh, so that's about an hour. Uh, and a third uh, to get all three done, so it's about 25 minutes of blade. And then I move on to the hand sanding. 
so I bring these, I start off with a 320 grit uh, rhino wet paper and I move up to 600 and after 600 I move up to 1000 on these knives uh, to give them a, a pretty, uh, I, I like the 1000 grit finish, it's a good, in my opinion, working finish for a knife handle. So the hand sanding process took me around two hours, so about 40 minutes a knife there. Uh, I got all three done uh, pretty, I felt, felt pretty quick. One thing you can see me doing here is I have a, uh, a sanding block there, uh, or a sanding bar. Uh, if you're, especially if you're using stainless, I found, the handle material is softer than the pins, so you'll get doming of the pins if you just do it all by hand. So I use that sanding block to make sure that all the pins are flat and you're not having like that domed feeling when you run your finger over the pins. Lastly here we're going to be sharpening these blades. So I take a piece of painter's tape, uh, I spray down the blade first with some type of oil, WD-40, ballastol, whatever, whatever. I put a piece of tape on the top and then I put my uh, sharpening jig over that piece of tape so that the blade doesn't get scratched. And you know this is Tormix style uh, sharpening system so these, this jig was from Wynn but it's pretty much uh, the same thing as a Tormix knife jig. Uh, you can see the cards above and I have a very good review, or at least I think it's good, a decent review of this uh, sharpening system. It works pretty good and it can sharpen blades fairly fast. And I'm sharpening these blades from a zero edge uh, to an edge. So we're, we're taking it from anywhere but, you know, between five and ten thousandths of an inch uh, down to a zero edge. So um, anyway, uh, so this took about almost two hours, uh, 1.8 hours, 27 minutes a knife. Uh, to get these uh, hair shaven sharp. You can see I used that uh, 220 grit stone. I then used the grating stone to get it down to about a thousand grit stone and then I move on to a strop uh, to knock that burr off. And here you go, these are the uh, finished knives here. Uh, the three of them uh, that were, were finished up, they ended up getting coupled uh, with Diomedes leather industry sheaths. Uh, we've been doing some partnerships there. He's making leather sheaths for my knives and the whole package is beautiful uh, together. He does amazing leather work. Uh, way better than, than I'm capable of doing at this point. So I like being able to offer my customers a nice finished product. So about that test knife. So we have this uh, extra knife here that I, I messed up the grinding on. So I figured might as well go ahead and start testing it. So I did a little edge rolling test there and it performed well. And then I just started hammering it through this piece of uh, steel. It's not very thick, but the edge held up very good going through this. And then I used the knife to baton against some nails. Uh, it, it didn't have any super issues with this. It did have maybe ever so slightly uh, in one spot a small roll, uh, probably right at the impact of that first nail. And then I did a little flex test because these are fun to do and uh, I think it did okay. Wasn't perfect but uh, you know good enough. Hopefully no one's prying on my knives like this. So all in all it took around 5.4 hours per knife of actual labor not including tempering and not including uh, the glue set time. So I'm hoping that by getting a little insight into my batch making process, it gives you all some ideas that you can utilize in your own shop back home. If it did, please hit that like button below and also go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you will be informed of new content when it's posted on this channel. With all of that, I'll catch you all on the flip side.